Hi, my name is Irene and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making a chilled avocado soup. Um, it's really delicious and it goes great with spicy Mexican food. Um, it's a wonderful thing to serve for Cinco de Mayo. Um, and I also love it because um, nowadays there's so many people that are vegetarian or vegan or can't have anything with lactose in it. And this recipe fulfills all of those needs. Okay, so we're going to get started by learning how to cut up a serrano chili since that's in the recipe and they're kind of tough sometimes to cut up. I'm going to start by putting on some, these are just little disposable gloves and it will protect my skin and then if I touch my face I won't get any of the oils from the chili on my face. So I'm going to slip these on and then I'm going to grab the serrano by the top stem. Okay, so we got the, the uh, chili by the stem and I'm just going to slice down the edges of the chili just making maybe about hmm, four separate pieces. And most of the seeds are going to stay inside the chili pepper. And then you can, make, you can make these pieces a little bit narrower. It will help to keep your pieces small, which you want. And then chop crosswise. And that's pretty much it. And if you'd like to add some seeds to the saute, you can. It will make your soup a little spicier. Um, I'm, I am not going to put them in this time, um, just to be on the safe side for those that don't like things too spicy. All right, so we've got the chili all chopped up, and now we're going to start sauteing um, the shallots and the garlic and the chili together in a small pan. So I'm going to put about two tablespoons of oil in my frying pan. And we're going to heat it up. Probably medium heat is fine. And we'll add the shallots first. Give that about mm, a few seconds to get warm, stirring it around. And then we'll add some garlic. And then finally, we'll add our fiery little serrano. And that will be stirred. You probably want to cook this for about two to three minutes until everything starts to get soft and kind of sweated. So we're sauteing the uh, shallots, garlic, and the chili together in a pan. And it, it, it's just going to get soft and the vegetables will sort of sweat. Um, and that's going to take about three to five minutes, depending on the heat you have it on. I would recommend keeping the heat rather low. Um, and then once it's finished, shut the flame off and allow it to cool, at least to room temperature. Now that the um, onions and garlic and chili pepper are sauteed, we're gonna let them cool to reach room temperature. And while that's going on, we're gonna come over here and make our cilantro oil. It's really easy to do. You're just gonna take your chopped cilantro and put it down in either a food processor or a mini chop. I like this mini chop because it's a small capacity and this is we really just have a small amount of, of um, items to put in it. So you can put in your cilantro and then add your oil and then a little bit of salt. And then we're ready to process it. Okay, so now we're going to process the uh, cilantro with the oil and the salt. And um, we're just going to grind it up. And about halfway through, you'll want to take your spatula and just scrape down the sides so that you kind of get an even distribution of the leaves through the oil. So we'll just scrape it like that and give it another shot. Do it one more time just to make sure that all those leaves get ground up in the oil. A little messy. Okay, 
think that looks great. Okay, now that we've finished processing the cilantro leaves and the oil, we're going to remove them from the processor and let them drain through a sieve. And this will separate out the leaves from the oil. And what will be left in the bottom of the cup will just be pure oil. One thing I recommend though is not to press down on the solids through the sieve. Just let them sit and it will drain on its own. And that's going to take you about 15 minutes. Um, so it's a perfect time to allow the oil to separate and make the soup. So that's what we're going to do next is work on the main part of the soup while the cilantro oil separates. So our oil is separating and we're going to start cutting up avocados. Um, and there's a really easy way to cut up the avocado and get the most out of the fruit. So we're going to start by just slicing down the avocado and you know you'll feel your knife hit the pit and you just go around the pit with your knife and pop it off. And there it's opened. And then holding the piece of the avocado that has the pit in it, you just put your knife in there and remove the pit really easily. So now we're going to take the rest of the ingredients and just mix them together. So we've got our chopped avocado that we just chopped up. We're going to put that in a bowl. And then we're going to add to that our lime juice. And I used a um, different kind of lime. It's sort of like half between a lemon and a lime. It has sort of a sweeter flavor. But you can use any kind of lime juice you like. Today I'm using vegetable broth um, for the vegetarian friends. But you can also use um, chicken broth if you'd prefer. And to this mixture we're going to add our cilantro. the spices, the cayenne, and the cumin. And finally, our coconut milk. It's going to give it the creamy texture. And we're just going to mix that all up just a little bit so it's kind of combined. And finally, we're going to add our cooled serrano chili, garlic, and shallots. And we'll just mix those in together with the rest of the avocado and all the liquids. And um, just stir it around a few times and then we're going to put it in the food processor. I'm just going to transfer some of the soup into a pitcher and that's going to make it a little bit easier to get it into the food processor. And we're just going to pour it in through the top. Put this on. And process it. Now that we've finished processing the soup, um, you might notice that it's a little thick. Um, sometimes it comes out thicker or thinner depending on the size of the avocados that you use. So I always keep a little extra vegetable broth on hand to stir in and thin it up. Okay, once you get the soup to the consistency that you like um, by adding the broth, now's a good time to taste it because the broth does add a little bit of salty flavor and if you want to add additional salt, you need to taste it first. So I'm going to just try a little bit. Mm. Oh, that's good. Now we're ready to put the soup into the refrigerator. And the best way to keep it from browning is to actually place the plastic wrap down onto the surface of the, of the soup so that there's very little air making contact with the soup. And once you've got that done, um, you can put it in the fridge. And it should be refrigerated for about three hours to get it nice and cold. Now depending on what kind of event you're having, um, there's several different ways to serve it. And I've given two options here, you know, to make it festive for a party. Um, and one is just a larger container um, that uh, really looks pretty. Um, I just put a, a few spoonfuls of the soup in there. And then a little cup, which is great just for um, a large party or a, a ladies Cinco de Mayo luncheon. Um, and a lot of people think it's very cute. And then we're going to garnish with a little bit of our cilantro oil that we made earlier. Just do a drop or two, just for extra flavor. And then some pumpkin seeds. These came from Whole Foods. They're just got some chili powder on them. And they're nice and crunchy and salty. I'm serving this with a basic cornbread. Um, it's a nice, sweet addition to the tangy soup and the flavors play off each other. Um, on the large plate I just made a loaf and put some slices and then on the small plate I made a little miniature um, muffin um, which is just a little taste that goes with the soup and um, I think it looks kind of nice. 
But let's try this. Um, now we're ready to eat and it looks so good. Feliz Cinco de Mayo. Mmm, deliciosa.